texts and calls from people in uh, Cornwall, Bridgewater, Stroud, Swindon, all doing similar to what we're doing today. So they're sending us their solidarity. Okay, thank you. Right, now next up we've got Owen um, Lloyd-Jones from the People's Assembly, Bristol. So my name's Owen, I'm from the like, uh, just getting directions on how to use a megaphone uh, from uh, People's Assembly Against Austerity. Uh, for those of you who don't know uh, what People's Assembly is, um, it's a broad non-party campaign against austerity politics. Uh, we work with the unions, uh, with various political organisations and different campaigns to try and bring together all the struggles against, for example, uh, NHS cuts and privatisation, um, council cuts, and today supporting uh, Unite Community on the benefit sanctions issue. Um, so we've all heard the horror stories, um, for example, um, somebody who was sanctioned for six weeks for not going to an appointment the day a close family member died, uh, despite having phoned the job centre and agreed to postpone their appointment. Someone else whose benefits were stopped because they were attending a job interview Apparently that's not a good enough reason to miss your job centre appointment. Uh, someone else was sanctioned for not doing a job search on Christmas Day, um, which is obviously another HR hotspot when they release all their vacancies. Uh, another one who was sanctioned because they couldn't afford to travel to a work, a work fair placement several miles away from their home. Another was sanctioned for volunteering in a youth club because it was counted as paid work even though it was volunteering and they didn't receive any money. And my personal favourite is somebody who applied for three jobs one week, three jobs the next Monday, um, and were then sanctioned for 13 weeks because the job centre's week runs Tuesday to Tuesday. Um, so that's 13 weeks with no money for food, heat, rent, transport. Um, and this is repeated all across the country. There are a million people a year relying on handouts from food banks, according to the Trussell Trust, who run the biggest food banks. And the impact on mental health has been terrible, with increasing levels of depression and many cases of people being driven to suicide. And these, these sanctions are ineffective and cruel. There are no savings to be made in forcing people into starvation and destitution. And it's time, time we stopped. And that's always the government's excuse, money. They talk about how they regret it, and there's no alternative, but then they spend 50 million pounds a year on applying sanctions, 200 million on monitoring or spying, in, uh, in real people's words, the claimants to check that they're applying for enough jobs. The fact is, this isn't a neutral attempt to balance the books, it's a deliberate ideological choice, made by the same people who are deliberately running down the NHS, Underfunding, underfunding the council, underfunding our schools, and using all of these things as an excuse to privatise when the money runs out. Sanctions are terrible, and we should be protesting them, and it's great to see people are, but they're part of a much larger agenda of privatising government services. Even the job centre services themselves are mostly provided by private companies like uh, ATOS, A4E, uh, Serco, and so on. And the workfare programmes subsidise the biggest, richest companies to pay uh, apprentice wages or just JSA to benefit claimants. If these companies need our labour, they should pay for it. If they can't afford to pay the minimum wage, that's the fault of their business model, not their workers. What can we do about it? The only strength we have is our numbers. They've got all the money, they've got all the institutional power, but if we fight together, we can beat them. The government relies on people not joining the dots and on picking us up one group at a time, one individual at a time and one struggle at a time. The only way we can win any of these struggles is to link all the struggles and stand in solidarity with other campaigns. We'll do all we can to support Unite's campaign, um, however we're a volunteer-led organisation and we have very limited capacity to do anything unless we get more volunteers. So if anyone can give even half an hour a month, a week, just to help us out with organising, please do. Uh, the, more to, the more people give their time, the better job we can do. Political change doesn't come from above, it comes from us.
So on that note, our next organising meeting is next week, next Monday at 6.45 in the TSSA offices on Baldwin Street. And if anyone can help at all or just bring ideas just to that one meeting even, any time at all you can spare would be very welcome. Thanks everyone.